Hello and welcome to the Calculator Guy video on integrating partial fractions with help from the Casio FX CG50. In this video we're going to have a look at changing an expression into partial fraction form and then using that partial fraction form to help us integrate between certain limits and we're going to use the FX CG50 to help us out with this. Now the reason why I say help is that the FXCG50 is not going to do this method for us. Remember that the CG50 is not a CAS calculator, a computer algebraic system. It can't perform symbolic algebraic manipulation for us. We have to do that. If it did, it wouldn't be allowed in many exams, including A-level mathematics. So we're going to have to do the work for this particular question, but we are going to use the calculator to help support our working by verifying the answers as we go along, giving us that increased confidence that we're going in the right direction and confirming that we've got the right answers at the end. Let's take a look at the question that we've got. So part A, we need to express 3x minus 8 over x minus 2 all squared in the form, and then we've got a partial fraction form set up here, a over x minus 2 plus b over x minus 2 squared. And then part B, we've got to show that. And then we've got the integral between 5 and 3 of, well, the expression that we had in part A there, 3x minus 8 over x minus 2 all squared. We're going to integrate it with respect to x. And we can see that we're going to get the answer in the form natural log P plus Q. So it's going to be an exact answer, which is why we can't use the calculator directly. And we're also told there that P and Q are rational numbers. So first off, we're going to start by changing the expression into a partial fraction form. So if we said that 3x minus 8 over x minus 2 all squared is going to equal the partial fraction form that we have here, the first thing that we're going to do is to multiply it throughout by the highest order of x that we have on the denominator here. So we've got x minus 2 all squared. We're going to multiply everything by x minus 2 all squared. So we've got one working outline, and that's going to help us to find a and b. So let's just write out what we've got. We've got 3x minus 8, which is just the top from that initial fraction. If we multiply by x minus 2 all squared, then the denominator is cancelled out there. And we're going to say that that is equivalent to, well, if we multiplied a over x minus 2 by x minus 2 all squared, if you imagine x minus 2 all squared as being uh, two brackets, x minus 2 and x minus 2, then one of them will cancel with the denominator. That's going to become a and then x minus 2 in brackets. And if we multiply b over x minus 2 all squared by x minus 2 all squared, well, we're just going to be left with b. So it's just going to be plus b. So we've got this here. 3x minus 8 becomes a x minus 2 in brackets plus b. Now the next step is to expand out that bracket on the right hand side. So we can rewrite this line as 3x minus 8 can be expressed as a x, so it's a multiplied by x minus 2a plus b. And if we just compare the x terms on both sides, we can see we've got 3x on the left hand side and then we've got just ax on the right hand side. Well, that must mean that a must be 3, just comparing the equivalent coefficients there. So a has got to equal 3. So what we're going to do, let's just rewrite that line, but we're going to substitute a in as 3. So we know 3x minus 8 is equivalent to 3x minus, well, 2 times 3 gives us 6, so minus 6, plus b. And so we know that we've got two numbers there, so b is just going to be a number. Minus 6 plus b has got to equal the number, so the constant on the other side. So on the other side, we've got minus 8. So we know minus 6 plus b has to equal that minus 8. There's no other terms available. So therefore, minus 6 subtract another 2. We've got minus 8. So b is going to be negative 2. Let's just rewrite our partial fraction form now that we know a and b. So we can express 3x minus 8 over x minus 2 all squared as 3 over x minus 2 minus, because we've got negative 2, 2 over x minus 2 all squared. And then we've completed part A of the question. 
Now, before we move on to part B, we're just going to use the CG50 to confirm that this is correct. It appears that we've done everything right, but we might just want to verify that this is the correct partial fraction version of the expression that we had, especially since we're actually going to be using this in part B. So we want to make sure that it's definitely right before proceeding to part B so that we don't carry that error over into part B and therefore continue to make some subsequent mistakes. So what we're going to do is to go onto the calculator and go to seven table, table mode. And what we're going to do here is we're going to input two functions. The first function, which I'll just use as Y1, is going to be the first fraction that we had. So that is 3x, so you can use the x theta t button to get an x, 3x minus 8 over x minus 2 all squared, and execute, so that's inputted that. And then y2, what we're going to do is we're going to input the partial fraction form, so that is 3 over x minus 2 minus 2 over x minus 2 all squared, and execute to enter that. We're going to produce a table in just a moment. First, we're just going to set values. And incidentally, you can do this on the Casio Classwiz FX991EX as well. If you like, that does have a table mode. So you are able to confirm this as well. But we just happen to use the CG50 in this video. So let's input a starting range. We've got 1 and 5 by default. Let's just extend that. Start of minus 10, end of 10. We'll keep the step as 1 and we'll execute that and let's just press F6 to generate a table of values and what we can see here is if we're comparing the blue which was our original fraction with our partial fraction form here in the red we can see that it actually gives the same values for the different things that we input as we scroll down confirmation that well we can be 99.9% .9 sure that they are equivalent to each other and we've done the partial fraction calculations correctly uh, just note two there, we've got error. Obviously, x can't equal two because we would have ended up with zero as our denominator there. There's a second way we can actually check as well visually um, if we wanted to. If we just go to menu and then we go to five, graph, you can see that we've still got the same functions inputted here as y1 and y2. So if we go to draw f6, and this goes quite quickly, so just be careful. You might be able to see there that it drew the blue graph, which was the initial fraction, and then it superimposed the red graph, which was our partial fraction vision on top of that. And so therefore, it looks like we've got the same function as one went on top of the other. That's enough evidence for us, really, to be sure that we're correct there and we can proceed then to part B. So part B then, uh, show that. So essentially, that means we're going to have to show all the steps to what we're doing here we can't just give an answer show that and then we've got an integration between the limits of five and three for our original fraction with respect to x uh, will give us an answer there natural log of p plus q now what we always must be careful with if we've got questions where we have a part a and a part b is part a might actually be of use to us in part b or any subsequent parts and in this particular case that is true the function that we have here uh, that we're going to integrate would be a little bit difficult to do but it's going to be a lot easier if we replace it with the partial fraction form that we found in part a now just before we do that what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually get a numerical value from the fxcg50 that we're going to check later now this isn't the actual answer that we want, but it will be useful later on to be able to verify that we've got the correct answer. So first things first, what we're going to do is use run matrix to check the numerical value, so the decimal approximation for the integral. So we need to go to run matrix and then if you press option and then F4, you can see there's a little integration sign there set that up for us um, so let's input a fraction so it's 3x minus 8 over x minus 2 all squared and then navigate right i think is the easiest way we can go back to put in the limits so the limits are three navigate up to five and just double check that we've got everything correct and you can see here that we, that equals 1.9625 as a decimal approximation. That's not in a logarithmic form or 
However, we need the exact answer there. So that's not going to be good enough, but we're going to keep that until later on to verify our answer. So if you're having a go at this question, or if it was an exam question, it might be worth just writing this down and putting it in a circle just to be able to check that a little bit later on once you've got your final answer to check that they match. So once that's done, what we're going to have to do is now proceed with doing the integration ourselves, showing each step along the way. So let's start off by substituting our original fraction with our partial fraction version that we found from part A. So if we rewrite that, we've got the integral between five and three of our partial fraction form there with respect to x. Now, we're just gonna change it one more time actually before we do the integration because it's a lot easier to integrate when we have it in index form. So we're just gonna rewrite this particular partial fraction version in index form. We're going to have the integral between five and three of three and then we've got x minus two to the power of minus one. That means the same as one over x minus two. Uh, minus two x minus two to the power of minus two. So we've changed that into index form just to make it easier for us to actually do the integration. So now we're all set up, we're actually going to integrate this expression. So if we take the first term that we've got here, three x minus two to the power of minus one, we should know from our experience that if we have power of minus one or one over a function of x, then what we're going to get is we're going to get the natural log of that function. So we're going to end up with the natural log of x minus two multiplied by three. And we would also just have to consider because we've got a function within the logarithm there, we would think about dividing by the derivative of that function. The derivative of that function is one. X minus two, we found the derivative, it would be one. Uh, so we'd be dividing by one. So we don't need to worry about it in this example, but obviously it's something to consider with other questions. Let's move on to the second term. Um, we're going to integrate this here. Now what we're going to do is add one to the power. So minus two will become a minus one, negative one. Divide by that new power, minus two at the front, divided by minus one, we're gonna end up with plus two. And that's gonna be x minus two to the power of minus one. And then we can just have the brackets on the end here that says that we're integrating between five and three. So we want to evaluate this now between five and three. If you're not too sure about the steps in the integration there, there's plenty of support in some of the A-level mathematics literature, plenty of practice there for you to be able to practice integrating with partial fractions. But I'm not going to focus on that in this video because we want to get to the answer and show how the CG50 will support that. OK, so I'm just going to rewrite this result here that we've got here. Uh, 3 natural log x minus 2. We could rewrite that second term as plus 2 over x minus 2. And again, we're evaluating between five and three. So let's input five and then three. So if we substitute it in five, we're going to get three natural log three plus two thirds. So that's two over five minus two, which is three. Minus, because we're going to minus the lower limit. So three natural log one plus two over one. So x minus two on the bottom there. So that's three minus two would give you one. So two over one. So there we go, and um, we just need to neaten this up a little bit and get it into the form so that we've got natural log p plus q, whatever they may turn out to be. But let's deal with the logarithmic terms. Well, this second logarithmic term, 3 natural log 1, well natural log 1 is 0, so that's going to be the equivalent of 0 there. So we're just going to concentrate on 3 log 3. Um, using our laws of logarithms, we know that we can raise the argument of the logarithm which is the second three that we've got here by the number that we have at the front multiplying on there and make that a power so we can rewrite this as the natural log of three cubed let's just gather together our two second terms we've got plus two thirds and minus two so that two over one uh, there remember we're subtracting it um, so it's minus two and let's just neaten this up one more time. So we've got it in the form that the answer wanted there. 3 cubed is 27, so it's natural log 27 minus, and then 2 thirds minus 2, well, that's minus 4 thirds. So there we go. Natural log 27 minus 4 thirds. 
So P would be 27 and Q would be four thirds on there. But how do we know this is correct? We've done all that work. So what we're going to do is we're going to input this result that we've got into the calculator, press execute, and the decimal equivalent of this will be 1.9625 and so on. So let's input natural log 27 minus four thirds, press execute. And here we go. You can see that we've got the same result as we did when we did the integration via the FXCG50 there. So again, we can perhaps never be 100% certain, but we can be 99.9% .9 certain that we've got the correct answer there. That's it for this video. Don't forget to subscribe for future videos. But thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time on The Calculator Guide.